Thank you. Thank, thank you, Joy, for the introduction. So, when you think of Niantic, uh, you probably think of Pokemon Go. At a higher level, though, you think about maps and games. We use maps to build our games, and today we're going to talk about making maps and building games. So, maps form the basis for spatial computing. There have been several large advances in spatial computing in the last year, as you all know. These recent advances require an even more advanced map. So why are we qualified to build that map? Let's go into a little bit of history. So Niantic's roots are in mapping and map software. So the founder of uh, Niantic is John Henke. Several of, uh, several of those folks, including myself, were part of Keyhole in 2001 and built this, this small little app that visualized the Earth. We were acquired by Google in 2004, and John and I led the Google Maps and Geo teams as we built Maps, Earth, Street View, and many other geo-based products. In 2011, John, John Henke, uh, one of the members of the Hall of Fame in AR now, uh, spun off a little, a little group called Niantic Labs within Google and started to build these map-oriented games like Field Trip and uh, Ingress. And in 2015, he spun the company out of Google, which, by the way, was a pretty big trick at the time, and uh, it created this new company, Niantic Labs. In 2016, we launched Pokemon Go and became you know, immersed in everything about augmented reality. So augmented reality encompasses both location AR and visual AR. You think about location AR as the pokey stops and the maps and how it places you in the context of the world around you and these pedestrian-centric, interesting locations that you visit. But Pokemon Go also has visual AR and allows you to put your Pokemon into the real world. We actually just updated the uh, AR snapshot feature in Pokemon Go just a few days ago. Also, visual AR is, is critical, and, and many of the folks in the room are working very hard on it. We're very proud of Peridot. I think Peridot is the preeminent visual AR game around. The entire game takes place in the real world on your phone. And there's great experiences, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. For developers, we offer these tools to help leverage both visual and location AR across all of your products. So, uh, how do we build the map? Well, our Pokemon Go players and Ingress players have been providing us information about new opportunities to place Pokestops and other interesting locations on our map, and they've also been using their phones to scan and collect visual imagery that help us understand the physical world around them. We have millions of locations submitted by our players. This enables us to build Niantic's Visual Positioning System, or VPS. Our VPS allows you and us to place content in the real world very precisely and align that to real world objects and allow you or other people visiting the location later to localize themselves and then see exactly the same content in exactly the same place. We've already put out 250,000 locations around the world, and we're on track to do a million locations by the end of this year. So, why would you choose Niantic for your spatial map? Well, as I said, it's bottoms up. We are creating it from where people are, where the, where the pedestrian locations are. It's human-centric. It's also incredibly accurate. We, we can get centimeter-level accuracy because of the data we've collected. We're adding thousands of locations per day, and it's also expandable by developers, so you can add your locations to the map if you'd like to. In 2021, we, we found this great app called Scaniverse that was out there, and it allows you to scan any object or any location and immediately on device uh, create a 3D model of that app. It's a, it was incredibly powerful. We acquired the team, and we've expanded over time. The last year has been incredible. Uh, we were very excited, you know, this year to add Gaussian splats to the 3D reconstruction technology. If you look at 2023, that was a mesh generated by uh, Scaniverse. But in 2024, the same data can produce an amazing visual experience that I think offers new opportunities to provide a virtual experience in addition to the augmented reality ones that we work on. So we're now able to create it more efficiently, and, and more accurately and more, more visually. 
So, Scanniverse has many capabilities. You can capture objects, you can edit them, you can actually share them with, with your friends right now, and then you can, uh, I can browse all of the scans you've created. And with this new Gaussian splat capability, the visual impact is incredible. So let's talk about a little bit about what you can do with it. So on, okay, I've been working in 3D graphics for 38 years now, and I don't think we've seen anything this transformational since Silicon Graphics introduced real-time texture mapping in 1991. One of the shocking differences for me is that you look at trees. In Google Earth, they look like broccoli. They're kind of lumpy and you know, bouncy. Look at these trees. They're, they're incredible. You know, the details there, and more interestingly, if you insert 3D content into them, they z-buffer correctly. They, they have great depth. And now, being able to build these experiences on device in Scanniverse allows you to you know, confirm that you've collected a good scan, that you've validated it. So you can look at it, look at it on your phone, and if you, you know, if you don't like it, you can try it again while you're still there. It's very important. Finally, we've created 300,000 splats with Scanniverse already. So, you know, we are making maps, combining the power of Pokemon Go players and Ingress players with these Scanniverse users to collect and, and process more data. And we're finding unique locations all around the world and getting, getting locations added. But what can this do for you as the developer? We just announced, or we're about to announce today, that uh, you can take Scanniverse as a developer and add locations to the map and then scan them and make them part of the Niantic map and we will process it for you. So as you need to increase the map size or go to very specific locations, you can now use Scanniverse to do that. We're very excited about this capability. So what does that mean for developers? Well, if you think about building games with a map, you need to build games. And for that, I'd like to bring out Eric Murphy Jatorian, who is the co-founder of 8th Wall and is now a VP of Engineering at Niantic, and he's going to tell you a lot about 8th Wall in the future. Thanks, man. It's great to be back here at 8OWE. Uh, many of you in the audience know 8th Wall, but for those who don't, 8th Wall is synonymous with Web AR and is the premier development platform for building augmented reality content on the web. And for those of you who have used it, 8th Wall has been building professional tools for web augmented reality development for years, and we've been powering thousands of commercial AR experiences for the world's largest brands and companies. We offered powerful computer vision capabilities, including on-device SLAM, image targets, face effects, and human AR. And we've greatly up-leveled our products since we joined Niantic and two years ago and brought Niantic technology like Maps and VPS uh, to the web market through 8th Wall. But there are exactly two requests that you've asked us for over and over again at 8th Wall. The first is a visual editor for easily building spatial content in real time. And I'm proud to announce that yesterday we made this a reality with the release of Niantic Studio. <laughs> Niantic Studio is a powerful new editor and web gaming engine for developers to build 3D and XR immersive experiences. Just launched a public beta yesterday, Niantic Studio is now available for use at 8thWall.com. But before I jump into some of the features, let's take a quick look at what's inside.
So first and foremost, Niantic Studio is a visual editor and a major evolution over the 8th Wall code editor. It moves us from a text-heavy creation tool to a true visual editing experience that makes everything you create accessible and visible in real time. Studio offers progressive complexity that enables you to build immersive experiences easily and quickly, while continuing to offer the professional quality tools, code, and customization that you expect from 8th Wall. The intuitive visual editor eliminates the gap between ideation and visualization, streamlining the traditional development cycle of code, compilation, deployment, and iteration into a single fluid motion. Each action you take, from adding or adjusting assets in 3D space to real-time scene manipulation, is reflected instantly in the scene. Features like drag-and-drop 3D assets, scene graph manipulation, sliders and widgets for adjusting position, rotation, and scale. Editable live play, giving you the ability to build, edit, and preview 3D content and scenes in real time. And within play mode, you can preview your experience live and make changes while your project plays. And you can even save the edits you make right back to the studio environment while in play mode. But more than just an editor, Niantic Studio is a powerful new web gaming engine. Comprised of a familiar entity component system, Studio provides a powerful runtime environment that can manage thousands of game objects simultaneously. It includes a built-in physics engine with custom scripting, as well as a common interactive components like particles and audio, animations, lighting, and more. And of course, Niantic Studio is built on years of research and advanced XR breakthroughs from Niantic and 8th Wall. Studio provides visual tooling for face effects and world effects, and we will be bringing the visual tooling for all of our advanced XR tools and technology in the coming months. But there is so much more to Studio. Here's a list of the many features available with yesterday's launch. Eric, that's an incredible list, uh, but how does it work with maps? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I wanted to show you a video of what's coming soon with a demo of how Scanniverse and Studio will soon work together to build experiences for real-time locations using VPS and immersive fly-through experiences using Gaussian splats. So Eric, that, that's a great demo. I'm really, really impressed with that. Uh, but you mentioned there were two things that you really asked for. What was the other? Right. The second request that we get over and over again is to make 8th Wall's tools cheaper. <laughs> and I'm excited to announce that we're also delivering on that request. Niantic Studio is free to use, and it's available today at 8thWall.com. So just to be clear, you know, anyone can build with this for free? Yes. For the first time, 8th Wall has a new free tier that enables you to build and deploy with Studio and use everything we showed today. Um, try it out now at 8thWall.com. I'm very excited, Eric. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, Eric. An incredible effort. So I started by declaring that spatial computing needs a new map, and Niantic is building it. This goes beyond mobile devices and includes mixed reality headsets. So this is where we've been investing to build the map. Special com spatial computing devices will eventually go outdoors, and ultimately, these are true AR glasses will need a 3D map of the world. This is backbone infrastructure that will enable any outdoor wearable to display spatial content in a way that understands and meaningfully engages with the world around you. With Niantic Studio, 
you'll be able to create and build entirely new experiences connected to a location, and you'll be able to connect to the same location with different devices remotely. Now, this video here is a superpower. I talked about it last year in theory, but now it's real. So this combines Niantic's visual positioning system using AR and VPS with our VR capabilities of being able to bring a splat into your headset experience. These two users are experiencing the same location, but from two completely different paths. One is on device with their phone doing augmented reality. The other has brought, taken their headset, loaded the splat, and most importantly, simultaneously sees exactly where the other person is. We created a shared AR, VR experience that I think, you know, think about this from the gaming perspective. If you could take an outdoor game and bring all of those indoor users in to share it with you, you greatly expand the audience. We're very excited about this, and we're very excited to make it available to developers you know, of our products. So we have lots of exciting demos downstairs in the lobby, and uh, I think you, know, you should get, definitely give them a try. You know, I mentioned the, the Hello Dot capability on MetaQuest 3. It's an amazing experience. I tried it out yesterday. We also have Skatrix Pro by Reality Crisis on Apple Vision Pro, and they're expanding the use of VPS across many different devices and are a great partner. Finally, we have the Magic Leap 2. So we've taken our entire ARDK development stack, including the VPS, and enabled it on the Magic Leap. And you can see the demo downstairs, but more importantly, you can sign up for a private beta and get access to our kit on Magic Leap 2 today if you use the QR code. So thank you very much for giving it a try. And you know, we're so grateful to the many developers and businesses who are already working with us and have helped us improve our offerings. We've shown you a lot today. I want to thank the entire Niantic team for coming together and delivering these great new products on time here for today's show, live and, and launching them. I'm very excited. We welcome all of you to try our tools and help us build that spatial map together, because we believe that XR is everywhere for everyone, all at once. Thank you. <laughs>